Well, hello everyone. Hello, amazing people. I've been following somebody on Instagram who says that at the beginning of every thing. Hello, amazing people. Um, we're here at the cheap lounge. I got here a little bit early. I already had one drink. I'm having another in my Fisherman's Wharf mug from the former uh, Fisherman's Wharf here in Hawaii. Welcome to the Cheap Lounge. This is where we discuss inexpensive records and some CDs that I have uploaded onto my easy listening online streaming radio station, Moody Mood Music on Live365.com, which is linked below that you can listen to anytime. Now, normally we discuss the records that I uploaded this week. Um, however, as you may or may not know, I've been off the island for the past month of June and I was doing some traveling and things and stuff and visits and pageants and whatever. But I'm back home now. And so I'm actually gonna, we're gonna discuss the records that I uploaded the week before I left because I was gonna do a video on them, a cheap lounge, and then I didn't get a chance. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. So grab yourself a cocktail, happy hour, a cheap one. This is the cheap lounge. Actually, I guess since I've been gone for a while, it's kind of celebratory today. So you can get an expensive foofy one if you want to. <laughs> Let's start, shall we? Well, the first one is by an artist I'm sure we probably have heard of. Louis Prima. This album is called Blue Moon. Now, we probably, most of us probably know Louis Prima or think of Louis Prima as a singer. Um, sang with Keely Smith and Solo for many, many years. Uh, but this is actually an instrumental album. He did play a, a mean trumpet, and I think we sometimes sort of forget about that. Uh, Louis Prima, he is an Italian, well, born in, um, I think born in the States, but um, of Italian, a Sicilian to be specific, uh, descent, and really was known in the beginning, got his start in New Orleans with New Orleans jazz, type of jazz music, um, born in 1910, yeah, in the 20s started with uh, New Orleans jazz, ended up later, decades later, in Vegas. And I think he's very associated with Vegas. Um, yes, so kind of known, uh, recorded between 1929 and 1975, and I pick, picked up pretty much known for R&B, Boogie Woogie, also singing some Italian folk songs. So. A lot of his music um, out there. It's not impossible, I think, for a person in the now generation or people younger now to maybe get Louis Prima and Louis Armstrong mixed up in their heads. I don't know why I say that, but I just, because I almost had the urge to say, this is not the person that sang It's a Wonderful World, um, which was Louis Armstrong. But anyway... So this record is instrumental. Louis Prima and 12 Great Trumpet Instrumentals. And I enjoyed this album actually quite a bit. Um, you can definitely hear the um, New Orleans roots here in the, in the sort of jazz trumpet playing, but it's very much taken sort of uptown, you know, as opposed to a downtown. And I thought, when I was listening to them initially, I thought, oh, there's, they're sort of Billy Vaughn-esque. They remind me a little bit of Billy Vaughn. There's not twin saxophones going on, but there is that sort of backbeat um, 
very danceable kind of clean arrangements. And sure enough, the arrangements are by Billy Vaughn, Milt Rogers and Ernie Hughes. So that made a lot of sense. Prima Blue Moon. We like it. It's kind of an interesting record, I have to say. If you uh, are a follower or appreciate the Ink Spots, the uh, vocal group called the Ink Spots, quite popular back in the day. We're talking, um, what? I don't even know, like what, 1930s and 40s and 50s or something. I mean, like quite a bit, quite a while. Um, their lead singer, I guess you could call him the lead singer of the Ink Spots, was somebody called Bill, Bill Kenny. And this is a solo album post Ink Spots after they broke up. Um, and there were several changes of membership and a lot of confusion over who had the rights to use the name The Ink Spots. There were some lawsuits. I'm not going to get all into it, but it's possible for you to find budget label recordings and other recordings by groups, different groups of people calling themselves The Ink Spots, who maybe had one member from the original Ink Spots. And anyway, anyway, Bill Kenny sings the golden hits of the ink spots can say if I didn't care would I feel this way if this isn't love then why do I thrill and what makes my head go round now, what I found interesting in, in researching a little bit about this, because I honestly didn't know, but uh, he, Bill Kenny was considered the most influential high, t one of the most influential high tenor singers of all time. I did not know this. Um, born in Philadelphia in 1914, I believe died in 1978. Uh, lead tenor for the Ink Spots had a successful solo career uh, afterwards. Now this album, what I find interesting about it, I don't know if you're familiar with the Ink Spots, but they sort of had a formula for a lot of music where uh, Bill Kenny or the lead tenor was, was the lead. The other members singing a uh, harmony back up and then they would have, during an instrumental bridge, a very deep voice person would give a recitation you know like i knew you didn't love me when you walked out the door or whatever um they do some of that in this record which is odd because there is no of this like bass singing person um it's bill kenny doing some of those uh recitations during the instrumental bridge and those ones sound a little odd because I think we're accustomed to hearing that deep voice and it's not, it's a very high voice giving the, the little voiceover recitation part. So yeah. um, that part of it is strange, but otherwise these are basically all the songs that Ink Spots were famous for. So he is just redoing them and it's not like he's doing something radically different to them. He isn't. They do have back, backup vocalists. So it basically sounds like the Ink Spots sort of re-recording their songs except they're missing that bass voiceover person but yeah interesting record enjoyable hello i live here on this record called golden memories 
you can experience golden memories on Moody Mood Music on Live365.com. Well, maybe not your memories, maybe the memories of your parents or even your grandparents. Vinyl recordings from decades past on Moody Mood Music on Live365.com. The link is below in the description. Now, here's a uh, CD. I am doing some CDs from time to time onto Moody Mood Music. And I've done several of these. This is one of those record CDs from the 90s, 1999. This is when uh, it was like this really cool sort of revival thing going on where they would take old soundtracks from old, from 1960s, sometimes in 70s, like groovy foreign films, a lot of them, and put them onto, that were not really available to the American public, and put them on CDs. So they're sort of very groovy. This is one of them, Beat Volume 1, Lounge at Cinebox. This is a German CD from 1999. Um, some of the songs, I'll say, you know, a little too groovy, a little too go-go to be included in movie mood music, but some of them spot on, sort of very cool and bossa novas or um, just cool, having a cool sound to them. Beat Volume 1. I don't have the Beat Volume 2. I picked this up a long time ago when, after they initially came out and then nobody was interested in them for a little while, after the initial coolness wore off. And I should have bought 5 million and I didn't because they were selling for next to nothing and now they're kind of expensive again because people think they're cool again. Here's a record that I can't really tell you very much about. I kind of tried to research the artists a little bit and there ain't much, so... I don't know. The record and the group. Classic, actually, very classic, easy listening. Um, this record is called A Dancing Violins by the Dancing Violins. And it's lovely. It's kind of just what you would expect it to be, right? Very easy listening. But if you uh, check out some of these tracks, they tend to be, or song titles, um, I don't think, you know, there's not a date on this, but it's, um, you can tell the age by the titles because they're all, they were all pretty much contemporary songs. Light My Fire, who doesn't love an easy listening version of that? I Say A Little Prayer, It's Not Unusual, Mission Impossible theme, What Now My Love, yeah. And I, what surprised me, uh, this is produced, I should say, by Snuff Garrett. Tells you a little something. So Snuff Garrett, Tommy Garrett, of the 50 guitars of Tommy Garrett. So it's that era for sure. Um, what uh, I, I particularly enjoyed about this record, though, is that they took all of these contemporary songs and they somehow managed to, while still sounding sort of contemporary, they definitely, they definitely took it to elevator level. I mean, this is pure elevator music. Dancing violins. 
on London Records. And finally today, well, again, if you follow any lounge, easy listening music uh, recordings, I'm sure you'll know that the piano duo Ferrante and Teicher, they are a staple of easy listening music and the old easy listening stations all around the world. Um, no lack of Ferrante and Teicher albums here. And one that we uploaded recently is uh, one that I was very, very uh, looking forward to listening to called Ferrante and Teicher Salute Nashville. So we have kind of a, since the year on this was, uh, what was the year on this? 70s something? 1972. Yeah, 1972. So I was kind of expecting some nice, you know, country pop twang in there. And I have to say, it disappointed me. Can I say that about Ferrante and Teicher? This album, yeah, it kind of, it's not bad. I don't mean it's bad, it's perfectly good. Has great tracks on it. You know, I never promised you a rose garden. Delta Dawn. What's that flower you have on? You know, Take Me Home Country Road. But I just felt like they could have countryfied this a little bit more. Like they really took sort of a serious approach. I mean, okay, to it. Now, their um, Ferrante and Teicher piano duo, Louis Teicher from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, not a great distance from where I was born, uh, Arthur Ferrante from New York City. And uh, they were also known for doing some sort of experimental sounds at some points with the pianos, um, doing like mallet sounds and chime sounds, sticks, putting things on the strings to affect the sound of the piano. But then they also did a lot of just straightforward, loungy, easy listening stuff as well, especially later on as they went on in their career. But yeah, this one, it's okay, you know? I mean, it was a dollar, it's okay. But I wouldn't put down a lot of money for it just because I felt like it could have been a little bit more, a little bit more country. <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks for watching, you guys, and um, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Stay tuned for more. Check out Moody Mood Music if you want to. And something else I want to say: um, looking, look forward to, <laughs> or dread, something I'm going to do on Moody Mood Music, which is I'm going to do uh, Christmas in July. I'm going to take the week before July 25th. And I'm going to program some Christmas music into the playlist. Not a lot. It'll be like two, like four in an hour, two and a half hours, something like that. And then we'll end on January 25th with 24 hours of all Christmas music on July 25th instead of December 25th. I don't know. I just thought it might be kind of fun. I love Christmas music and why not? Why not have Christmas in July, you know? So I'm thinking I might, maybe the next one or the one after or whatever, I, the next cheap lounge may be Christmas records because I have gotten a lot of Christmas records this past year and I will have to upload some of them and digitize them and put them onto the station. So I might just do a cheap lounge Christmas in July edition coming up soon. Maybe the next, though not the next one, but the one after maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Give me your thoughts on that anyway. So thanks for watching. Um, we will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.